Ayun, so isang nangyari <laughs> sa buko ko. Ayun, isang magandang uh, magandang magandang hapon po sa lahat ng ating scholar na nandito po. Ayun, so uh, again, so uh, salamat po sa inyong uh, patuloy na pag-attend sa ating scholarship grant. Ayun, ng ating Kukiri NC2. So in the last meeting that we tackled is uh, about the basic and the common competency. Ayun, so nakita niyo na po ba yung mga assignments niyo? <laughs> Meron na po ba mga assignments? Wala pa po. Meron na sir. Ayan. So meron na po. Ayan. Just double check ko rin po ulit mamaya yung mga assignment yung po kung kailan. Alam ko ang deadline natin natin is Monday. Monday or Tuesday atang nakalagay doon. Sir, wala pa po ako sa cookery. Meron na... lang ako sa entret. Ah, okay po. Sige, i-check ko na lang po ulit mamaya. Ma yung Thank ano, you yung inyong... Uh, Uh, account. Okay, so uh, now we will proceed for our first discussion of core competency that we had. So let me share my screen first. Ayan. So uh, I have here the CBLM. Okay, ang CBLM po natin is a alternative. Okay, again, ito po yung sinabi ko sa inyo, it's alternative for the books and all of the resources that came from, uh, that we are, uh, I mean, na nandito sa loob ng ating CBLM. Ayan. Ah, yun po yung mga combination ng sang iba't ibang mga learning uh, materials or resources po ng ating uh, uh, subject ng Kukiri NC2. So, uh, ayan. So, let me, ano na po, uh, let me start na po with our discussion. Okay, our core one, okay, core one po natin, ang title po ng ating core is uh, Clean and Maintain Kitchen Premises. So, whatever we Uh, we discussed here is for about uh, how to clean, how to maintain the kitchen premises, uh, how to uh, ano tawag nito? Uh, how to conduct the OHS, the occupational health safety practices natin, and how we'd be able to uh, to 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 perform okay inside the kitchen ko ano po yung dapat natin mga gawin. Also your uh, ayan, ngayon lang ata nag share ng screen. <laughs> Ayan. So uh dito rin po sa topic natin ng ating uh, uh clean and uh, clean and maintain kitchen premises. Sabihin ko rin po sa inyo kung ano po magiging uniform po ninyo. Okay, para pag nag-actual kasi I I already saw the turn training plan. So in a few days, okay, siguro by next week tapos natin lahat ng core competency. Okay, by start of February, ayan. So mag-i-start na po tayo ng ating actual Okay, so, uh, and then meron po tayong specific time kung kailan po kayo pwede pumunta ng school para makapag-training uh, uh, po tayo ng ating actual uh, performance mo natin or activities. Ayan, so, uh, okay. Importante po itong, itong uh, importante po itong uh, core competency natin, one, uh, which is the clean, uh, clean and maintain kitchen premises. Sa lahat po kasi ng core na meron po tayo, all we have to do is to clean and maintain our area, our stations. Kung saan po kayo naka-assign na stations, we should always maintain the cleanliness, the orderliness, and of course, your safety in your station. Okay, sa JSC po, meron po kayong kanya-kanyang uh, station okay, kung saan po doon kayo mag-perform or magluluto or magkakanak po ng inyong mga activities. Okay, so hopefully this uh, core competency one will help you to encourage Okay, that you uh, that you can maintain, uh, perform, and uh, uh, ano ito, uh, show okay uh, the what you call the uh, the clay go or clean as you go. Okay, this will be a send uh, also a reminders to everyone. Whatever information or data na meron po dito is ito po yung ginagamit natin sa kugiri and si natin. Okay, so uh, let us first define what is the meaning okay of uh, cleanliness okay cleanliness is a vital in every kitchen where food is being prepared okay so kasi sa kitchen kasi natin di ba sabi doon pinaprepare yung mga pagkain okay so vital po sa ating uh, system okay ng uh, preparations ng pagkain okay is yung cleanliness okay so uh Uh, Siyempre, kasi sa kusina, doon tayo nag-prepare ng pagkain, doon tayo nagluluto ng pagkain, doon din tayo nag-serve okay, or nag-plating ng ating pagkain. So, uh, kung ano po yung nasa loob ng station natin, so we need to, uh, kagaya nung ano, <clears throat> uh, is example ko sa ibang batch, 
uh, na ating uh, Mer- mer- meron tayong topic dito kasi na about sa ano, about sanitation. Later part, it is kasi sa inyo yung ano, yung sa sanitation kung paano natin ma-maintain yung pagkain ng ligtas bago natin siya ma Okay, so syempre isang factor okay ng ating safety precautions is yung pananatili natin ng paglilinis okay ng ating kusina. Okay, especially kapag ito ah, pag nag-actual kayo ng uh, Uh, sa loob ng kusina, di ba may mga station kayo, tapos kukuha kayo ng sibuyas, kamatis, paya, patatas, eh, tapos babalatan nyo siya, no? Okay? Uh, ito po yung madalas na nangyayari po sa mga scholar po natin. Pag binalatan na po, yung balat po ng mga ginamit nilang mga gulay, nandun lang po sa gilid, okay, ng kanilang station, which is hindi po dapat. Okay? Dapat ang kanilang, uh, ang kanilang, ah, uh, Uh, basura or ba- balat na pinagbalatan nila dapat diretso po agad yon sa trash bag. Okay, sa trash bag natin meron sa trash bin natin or trash bag, may color coding po 'yan. Okay, so hindi po tayo basta-basta magtatapon sa kulay black, kulay green or kulay red. May mga may mga de- indications po 'yan kung saan po dapat itatapon yung balat ng patatas, saan po itatapon ng plastic na pinagbalutan ng uh, ng gulay, mga ganyan. So, for practice po natin 'yan. dito sa loob ng kusina. Okay, so uh, also uh, kasi bakit? Uh, why do we need to maintain uh, cleanliness inside the kitchen to avoid food contaminations? Okay, uh, of uh, of tools, equipments and other ingredients po na gagamitin natin sa kusina. Okay, so uh, the premises of the kitchen should be clean and sanitized and stored properly. Now that we understand, uh, okay, cleanliness. Cleanliness is a process of removing visible dirt. Okay, so whatever dirt that you saw inside the kitchen, and when you remove it, when you clean, when you uh, uh, using, uh, when you clean it using the mop or the broom or the dustpan, okay, or the uh, yeah, like that, is uh, you are. Uh, applying okay the the term cleanliness because cleanliness is a process of removing invisible ah rem, la, process of removing visible dirt okay and now let's have here the sanitizing okay sanitizing is a process okay kung kanina uh, cleanliness is a process of removing visible dirt sanitation or sanitizing naman is application or process of removing invisible dirt. What are those invisible dirt? Those are microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, okay, that are present or possible uh, stay, okay, after you clean a certain area or premises. So you need to sanitize. So how do we sanitize? Okay, So, but before we that, how we before how we do sanitize is we need to know what are the different kitchen uh, cleaning chemicals. Okay, we say this. This is the allowable. Okay, na chemicals na pwede natin gamitin sa loob ng kusina. Beyond this description of different cleaning chemicals is hindi na po pwede. Okay, sa loob ng kusina. Okay, number one is detergents. Ayan, we can use the detergents inside the kitchen. Okay, to remove or to wash the tableware, surface, and equipment uh, because detergent can penetrate soil uh, quickly and soften it and it will easily dissolve or remove that kind of soil. So that's the purpose of detergent. Kung ba't ba tayo gumagamit ng detergent okay, sa ating, uh, <clears throat> sa ating uh, uh, paglilinis is to penetrate. Madali daw po siya magpatanggal ng soil at ng nagsasoften po siya ng mga Pag sinabi po nating soil sa kusina or sa plato, it doesn't mean a soil literally lupa. No. Pag sinabi po nating soil sa plate, it means those are the leftover food. Okay? Uh, yung mga salsa, buto-buto, yung mga uh, item na hindi na nakain ng customer, those are what you call soil in the dishes. Okay? Hindi po siya literal na lupa. Okay, yun po ang soil po pag sinabi nating term sa kusina is those are the leftover food okay, of the guests or the customers after they eat the food in the plate. Okay, so next natin is the solvent cleaners. Okay, solvent cleaners is used to okay, to remove okay, the grease that has burned. Okay, so yung kagaya ng puwitan ng Uh, ng kwale, ng kaldero. Ayan. So we can use the solvent cleaners okay, to degrease 
uh, to, the, to the grease and to remove okay, the burn oil or grease of our pots and pans and also our burner. Okay, so next one is we have here the acid cleaner. Okay, the acid cleaner is a, a low uh, low acid lang siya compared kay muriatic. Okay, si muriatic kasi it used for uh, little, uh, sa floor kasi ginagamit yon. Si acid cleaner sa atin dito is ginagamit siya sa mga plato. Ano ba yung example natin ng mga acid cleaners? Those are lemon juice, uh, calamansi, vinegar. Those are acid cleaners that can help to remove the heavily soiled dishes na meron po tayo. Okay, next is we have here the abrasive cleaners. Abrasive cleaners are these cleaners can remove to heavy accumulation of soil that are difficult to remove with a detergent and some abrasive cleaners also disinfect. So it helps also the acid cleaner. Kung wala kayong acid cleaner, you can have the abrasive uh, cleaners. Kung wala abrasive, then that's alternative. You can use uh, any acid, the base uh, ingredients natin. The next one is ammonia. Okay, ammonia is known as NH3. It is colorless gas with distinctive colors composed of nitrogen and hydrogen atoms that it produces the natural in the human body in the need, uh, and in nature. In water and soil air, even in the in, in tiny bacteria molecule. Okay, this ammonia okay, could remove okay, the dirt and also the smell of heavily soiled dishes natin. Okay, we can use that. Okay, another is we have here carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is usually used for stabilization of water after chemical softening. Okay, and in conjunction, and in conjunction with the lime, lime, pag sinabing lime, those are acid, acid uh, cleaners. Okay, uh, lime dosing or limestone filters for increasing the alkalinity of the water. Okay, so using the, pag sinabi natin, ano, increasing the alkalinity of water, uh, the water pH is going higher okay, than 7.0 pH level natin. So, pag tumaas po kasi yung alki, ating alkaline, okay, nagiging, ano po siya, nagiging hard water. Pag sinabing hard water, yung mismong water natin is maano siya magaspam. So dahil magaspang po siya, mas madali niya matatanggal yung dumi sa plato or sa tools and equipments na pinaggamitan natin. Okay? So next natin is Timsen. Timsen is approved by disinfection of floors, walls, and countertops, bathing areas, lavatories, bed frames, tables, chairs, garbage pails, and other, and other hard non-porous non -porous surface in school, hospitals, nourish nursing homes, and other healthcare institutions. So that is the health of the Timsen. Okay, next we have here, the commonly used in our uh, uh, kitchen is the dishwashing liquid. Dishwashing liquid, liquid is an all-purpose cleaner. Next is uh, chlorine or chlorine. Yeah, chlorine. <laughs> Chlorine. So, yung chlorine. Okay, chlorine. It kills the bacteria. Yan po yung ginagamit sa mga swimming pool. Ayan na uh, hindi po nagtatapon ng tubig. They, they just pour a simple, they just pour a compound of uh, chlorine and fluoride to clear the water and to kill the bacteria. And also inside the kitchen, we can use that. Okay, uh, especially kapag nag, uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, uh, heavy ano tayo, yung heavy cleaning station kapag talagang ipa-flushing natin lahat ng uh, air kitchen premises. Ayan. So we can use the, the, the water with chlorine. Okay? It, it kills the bacteria. is also disinfect okay, the area. Because it's used to treat the drinking water and swimming pool water. It's used to make hundreds of consumer products from paper to paints and from textiles to insecticides. So that's the help po ng ating chlorine. Next, we have here disinfectant and soap. Regular soap is designed to decrease the, uh, decrease, decrease the water surface, tensions, and leave the dirt and soil off surface. Uh, so it can easily rinse away Though regular soap does not contain added antibacterial chemicals, it is effective in getting rid of bacteria and other virus causing germs. Okay, the disinfectants uh, in the soap are used okay, for our hand naman. Ayan, para matanggal yung, ano, yung mga, bak uh, mga bacteria or mga virus sa ating kamay. Pero may mga disinfectant kasi na plain lang. Okay, all you have to do is to check the disinfectant or soap. Okay, na pwedeng yung gamitin na pwedeng magtanggal ng bacteria and viruses. 
Okay, so kagaya, for example, we use the safeguard, we use the bioderm, the green cross. Okay, those uh, soap that has antibacteria. Diba? They say sometimes 99.9% .9 kills the bacteria. And where it came from, saan daw nang galing? Para naman yung point 0.1. Saan naman pupunta yung point 0.1? So, ibig point 0.1 na chance na may bacteria. Okay, chances are chance. Pero ang, ang point doon is you can round off naman. Okay, nilagay na nila doon. Nilagay lang nila yung 99.9% .9 just for a marketing or visual. Okay, it kills kasi it's 99.99. Okay, but in short, okay, uh, It's just a marketing part. Pero lahat ng mga this one, lahat ng mga soap na ginagamit natin na may antibacteria, automatic po 'yan is nakakatanggal po ng bacteria sa ating kamay. Actually kahit regular regular soap lang naman po eh. Kaya lang, eh, siyempre, iba mas pinapaganda ni nila yung kanilang pangalan sa kayong produkto. Okay, para mas maraming consumer or uh, or buyer ang bumili sa kanila. Okay? So, is example po ng marketing po 'yan. Okay, kagaya na in-explain ko sa inyo na sir matong nakaraan. Okay, so next we have here after cleaning. Okay, after cleaning, now we will go tayo with the sanitizing method. Ano ba yung mga sanitizing method na pwede natin gamitan o i-apply para masanitize natin yung ating mga gamit? So we have here, okay, we have here the heat. Okay, heat, this can, uh, can be used as sanitation. That's the basic. That's the basic yan. Okay, ng ating paglilinis natin. But, okay, do you need to reach this temperature in order for you to kill the bacteria? Okay, what are those temperature? Okay, for the hot water, you need 171 degree Fahrenheit or 77 degree Celsius. Okay, and for the others, okay, to... Uh, To final rinse, daw nila, you need 180 degree Fahrenheit to 82 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, for uh, for a stationary rack. Okay, and then you need mas higher, uh, no, 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 higher temperature naman daw for a machine. At ano itong machine na tinutukoy natin? This what you call the dishwashing machine. Ito po yung uh, malaking machine. Mamaya, may kita niya po yung picture na kung saan dadaan po yung mga plato dito. O kaya meron tayong mga portable na mga dishwasher machine no? sa bahay. Yung mga mayayaman, may mga ganyan. Yung mga tamad baghugas. Nilalagay na nila doon sa rack tapos papasok na isasara na lang yung pinto. Then mamaya-maya, linis na siya tapos meron na siyang initan. Mga ganon. So example po yan for the sanitation. That's the basic. Okay, you can use the heat temperature. The other one is uh, the chemicals. We can use the chemicals to sanitize a certain kind of surface, tools and equipments. Okay, all you have to do is to know this kind of chemicals para hindi siya magkaroon ng contamination sa ating mga pagkain or mga gamit natin. Okay, we have the other one. Okay, we have another one that what you call the concentration. Okay, it's important to know uh, kung, kung gagamit po tayo ng chemicals sa pagluluto, ay sa pagluluto, gagamit po tayo ng chemicals sa paglilinis, sorry. Okay, you need to know the concentration. It means that how many concentrated chemicals are you need to, okay, to put in a certain kind of water. Okay, di ba may mga, may mga ganyan? For example, sa isang timba ng tubig, dapat maglagay ka lang ng two cups ng chemicals para for sanitation. Kasi beyond that, it's too much. Okay, less than naman, da, less than naman ng measurement is hindi natin mapatay yung mga bacteria. Okay? So next natin is we have here the temperature. Another one is the contact time in order to sanitize the kill harmful microorganisms. The clean items must be contact with the sanitizer, either heat or approved chemicals for the recommended length of time. Okay, so yan po yung ating mga kailangan pong alamin. Next, we will go tayo with the cleaning tools. Now that we already know okay, the different chemicals, it's now that uh, now kailangan natin is malam malaman ano yung mga cleaning tools na pwede natin gamitin after yung mga chemical na in approve sa ating gamitin. Next, uh, we have here the number one, the scrub brush. Okay, scrub brush is the most basic cleaning tool that you should have in your kitchen. Okay? Ito po yung floor brush. Okay? Another one is the dish cloth. Okay, dish cloth is used for whipping down the counters and the table. Okay? So, next, another one is non 
or lightly abrasive scrubbing pads. Ayan. So available po yan sa market natin. Nabibili po natin yan. Yung mga medyo magagaspang pero hindi po siya kaparehas ng steel wool. Pero it can use kasi to remove, helps to remove the soil uh, in, the, in, the, in the place or in the tools and equipments. Okay, ang maganda dito sa non lightly or non or lightly abrasive scrubbing pads, hindi niya kasi magagasgasan yung plato. Okay, compare kapag gagamit tayo ng steel wool. Nakakagasgas po ang steel wool. For example, you have the Teflon tapos merong di matanggal. You can just you can only you, you can just uh, use lightly abrasive scrubbing pads. Do not use steel wool kasi steel wool could remove the coat, okay, in the sote pana non stick. Okay? So You need to remind those things. Okay. Another one is cloth or towel paper, cloth, cloth towels or paper paper towels. Okay. So sometimes I provide this inside the kitchen, but not all, all the time. Okay. Because this one is medyo may kamahalan yun. Because ang isang 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 bilog niyan is the cost nang seventy five to one hundred pesos per piece. Okay. So depende po kung available po sa tinyo rin de. Okay. Next we have another one is the plastic scraper. Plastic scraper is help, okay, to scrape, okay, the dirt or soil that embed to the plates or tools and equipments. Okay, another one is rubber gloves used to protect our hands from cleaners and abrasive, abrasive scrubbies or gross food. Okay, another one is grease cutting dish soap. Okay, the grease cutting dish soap is used, okay, to remove the grease, okay, or petroleum or oil. Okay, uh, attached to the different tools and equipments that we had. We have the dish drainer used to uh, help the tools or the plates or the uh, tama, plus, uh, tools or plates to dry okay, the, uh, uh, from the air. Okay, next is we have the mop. Okay, sa mop natin, we have three types of mop. We have for dusting mops, polishing mops, and washing mops. Okay, so the dusting mop is used for removing dust. Okay, that is dry. Okay, ang polishing mops naman po, ginagamit siya for application ng mga polishing chemicals natin like floor wax, ganyan-ganyan. So, syempre, kapag yung isang mop, ginamit mo na siya for polishing, meron na kasing wax yun or grease. So, hindi mo na siya pwedeng gamitin sa tubig kasi hindi na i-absorb ng mop Okay, yung uh, uh, tubig, kapag ginamit na siya, una natin ng wax. Ma, 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 ano yan, nap, nap, mapapansin niyo po yan sa mga map na kung saan ginagamit siya for, uh, for wax or polishing maps. Kasi hindi niya kayang i-absorb so, yun. Dahil, dahil coated na po ng wax or ng polishing uh, chemicals, yung mismong hibla ng, ano, ng map. Okay, so kaya dapat yung mga map natin magkakaiba po yan. Meron tayong gagamitin lang for dust, meron tayong gagamitin for uh, to dry the, ano, the, the, the floor, meron tayong gagamitin for polishing the maps. Kasi hindi, hindi siya pwede mag-alternate, hindi pwede siya magsama-sama. Okay, ganun din po pagdating po sa ano, pag sa map natin sa CR, map natin sa kusina, ang mga map natin sa kusina hindi pwedeng gamitin sa sa CR. Ganun din ang mga map sa CR, sa CR hindi din po pwedeng gamitin sa kusina. Kasi pag ginamit niyo 'yan sa kusina, yung galing sa CR, amoy CR na yung inyong kusina, ang baho. Okay, so nire-remove natin yung ganong mangyari kasi pag mabaho po 'yan, makokontaminate niya po yung area. Okay, yung 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 baho kasi is sulfur. Okay, so ano po 'yan? Uh, mga bacteria po 'yan na sumisigaw, char. <laughs> mga bacteria po 'yan na nangangamoy. Okay, so kaya iwasan po natin na maggumamit ng gano or gumawa ng ganong classing procedure. Another natin is the brooms and the brushes. Okay, the brooms and the brushes are, are we have different variety we can use the 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 plastic which is the nylon we have also the yung sa ano yun sa ting ting ayan we can use also the uh, the, the the typical uh, broom that we had which is the soft broom using the the ano yun the leaves or the stem of a certain kind of plant okay na nakikita nila nakikita natin sa drawing Okay, marami tayong ganyan na ano na broom. Okay, next one is we have here the buckets and the warning sign. Okay, kapag may, kapag ang floor po natin ay na spill or may basa. 
Okay, at gagamit po at lilinisin po natin siya. It is a very important to put a sign. May dumadaan man o walang dumadaan. Okay, for kasi hindi mo naman alam yung mga tao kung dadaan ba sila o hindi eh. All you have to do is to put them or give them a warning sign so that they are aware that the floor is slippery or are oh, tama, is slippery. Okay? Para at least may iwasan yung hazard o yung accident na tinatawag natin. Okay? So next we have here the garbage receptacles. Okay? Pag sabi ng garbage, garbage receptacles, eh, these are the plastics. Okay? That we use before okay, the garbage bin. Para may iwasan po natin yung pagkakontaminate ng ilalim ng ating garbage bin, is kailangan gumamit po tayo ng bin liner. What is this bin liner? These are the plastics okay, that we place inside the garbage bag or bin. Uh, tama, bin, not bag. Okay, so nakuha po ba? And uh, another one is the goggles. Okay, the goggles is used for eye protection, especially when we are spraying a chemical in high places. Okay, nakataas yung spray bottle, no, to tinitingnan mo, tapos kailangan merong pang goggles. Okay, uh, another one is the face mask. Ngayon, kailangan po natin ng face mask sa loob ng kusina, whether you like it or not. Dati kasi, pwede na kaming walang face mask, eh. Huwag ka lang magsasalita. Pero ngayon, dahil pandemic, okay, hindi ka na pwede mag hindi ka na pwedeng magdaanin, hindi ka pwedeng walang mask. Dapat may mask tayo. Okay? So next one, okay, self-check. Ayan, may activity na agad. So next class, next uh, topic, OHS. Okay, what is this OHS? OHS stands for Occupational Safety and Health. Okay, so what is this? What is the purpose of this? Okay, so it is a referred to as safe health and safety of occupational health Okay, uh, that is, uh, it, it is a multidisciplinary field concerned okay, with the safety, health, and the welfare of the people at work. Okay, so this term also refer, as, refer to the goals of this field, so they are used in the sense of this article was originally abbreviational. Okay, so <clears throat> the goal of this OHS Okay, is to protect the co-workers, family members, employee, customers, and many other many others who might be affected in the workplace environment. Okay, so <clears throat> we can go to health regulations. Yes, health regulation is uh, there's a different rules or health regulations that we need to uh, take a look, especially when we apply a business. Uh, di ba, meron tayong health sanitation, meron tayong mayor's permit, mga ganyan. So may mga ganun tayo mga health regulations, mga ganun protocols. Those are the guidelines, okay, for you to maintain the safety, the cleanliness, okay, of your premises. Okay, so at least meron kang pagbabasihan pa paano may maintain yung inyong area or places. Okay, so another one is safety requirements for bending, lifting, and carrying using lift, using equipment. Okay. okay, so as you can see in the picture, okay, so the lifting process is from squat, okay, and going to, okay, lift into the half and lift into a straight back, okay. So, yan po yung nakikita niyo sa picture. Ayan, may mga process pa siya, no? Titingin ka, the preparation, lifting, carrying, and setting down. Okay, that is for the lifting process para may uh, para tama po yung pagbitbit natin ng mabibigat na mga gamit. Kasi sa loob ng kusina po, mabibigat pong equipments and tools. So, para maiwasan po natin yung pagkaroon ng back pain or pagkabali ng ating mga buto pag when lifting items, okay, you need to follow this procedure, okay, to... Uh, to prevent those things to happen. Okay, so, okay, number one is preparation. Pag sinabi natin preparation, think about what you will carry. Do you think it is heavy? Do you think this is 10 kilograms? Do you think it is uh, 25 kilograms like that? So, kung alam nyo na ganun siya kabigat, anong next na gagawin mo? Okay, so, you need to think ways how to carry these items. So kasama po sa preparation kung ano po yung gagamitin yung mga muscles okay or part ng body nyo sa pagbubuhat. Okay? 
The second one is the lifting. How to lift? You need to get closer to the load, okay, as possible, and try to keep the elbows and arms close to your body. Okay, then after that, you need to carry, do not twist, do not or turn the body. Instead, move your feet to turn. Your hips, shoulder, toes, and knees, you should stay facing the same direction. Keep the load close as to your body as possible with the eye elbows, uh, with your elbows rather, close to your sides. Okay, so if you feel that it's fatigue or mabigat, Okay, so all you have to do is to rest. Okay, magrest ka muna kasi do not force your body to carry heavy loads. Wow, parang ano lang, no? parang kanta lang. No? Okay, kasi kapag pinilit mo yung sarili mong buhat and yung mga mabibigat na mga bagay, pwedeng mag-collapse kasi yung body mo. Or probably magkaroon, na, magkaroon ka ng mga muscle cramps. Okay, nagka-cramps yung mga muscles mo. Okay, so possible po yung mangyari kapag matagal niyo pong buhat-buhat ang isang bagay. Okay, next natin is setting down. Okay, setting down is set the load down in the same way you pick up. Okay, kung paano mo siya binuhat, ganun mo din dapat siya iiwanan or ibababa ng maayos. Okay, so next, important things to remember. Okay, using mechanical means when possible or for heavier or awkward loads. Okay, so kung kung walang pang ano, kung hindi niyo kayang buhatin, hanap kayo ng trolley. Kung walang trolley, okay, mag-aas kayo ng help with the other people. Okay, within your work environment. Okay? So, I will show you a video. Okay, how to uh, lift the items or different items. Safe lifting tips. How do you lift objects? Do you keep your back healthy? One of the biggest causes of back injury is lifting objects incorrectly. So the big question is how to lift a light or heavy object safely. What is the recommended way to lift heavy weights? Of course, one of the common mistakes is rounding the back, which creates a serious risk of damaging the lumbar vertebrae. The deadlift is suitable for heavy weights. Keep your back straight. Hold the load as close to your body as possible. This principle is very important in lifting weights high. Variation, deadlift with arm support. Another option for lifting heavy objects is the squat. Here too, we must make sure to keep the weight near the body and keep the back straight. The erector spina muscles stabilize the spine. Another option is lunge with arm support. Resting the arm on the thigh directs the forces to the ground. Bend the knees and keep the back straight. This variation is like the squat but with legs closer together. On the left, we see a movement that is not recommended because it creates ongoing damage to the lower back. On the right, we can see careful maintenance of a straight back. What about light objects and forward bending? Bending forward is not a contraindication in our daily life. It is a very important movement to be kept and maintained. In many occasions in life, we need and should use segmental rounded bending in healthy back cases, such as in tying shoes, picking a light object off the ground, etc. In many daily activities that are not involved with higher vertical pressure, rounding the spine comes naturally. What about bending forward with a pathological spine condition? In cases of various back pathologies, this pattern should be avoided due to intervertebral disc problems. In a pathological spinal condition, it is recommended to maintain a straight back even when lifting light objects. Note, you should consult with a doctor in any pathological condition. For lifting medium to heavy weight, keep your back straight. For a lightweight object, we need and should use segmental rounded bending. In a pathological spinal condition, it is recommended to maintain a straight back. There is no one way to bend. 
Now, we should teach our students or patients various strategies for bending, allowing them to choose the right way depending on the specific functional demands. Okay, do you understand po yung sinabi ng, ano, ng ating video? Ayan, so meron pa nga siyang demo na pag kahit mag-lift tayo ng, ng item, kahit maliit. Pag maliit, we can use the bend our back kasi it's important to have also the exercise like that. Pero pag mabibigat na po, alam nyo na, kailangan straight yung ating likod. Kasi kapag hindi po yan, possible kasi magkaroon ng problema with your back pain. So napaka-importante po ng ng ganong procedure. Okay, now let uh, let's uh, let me continue now my discussion with the core one. Okay, now we will proceed to sanitation and cross contamination issue related to the food handling and preparations. Okay, so sanitation refers to a public health conditions related okay to clean drinking water and adequate treatment and disposal of human extract extra and sewage. Preventing human contact with uh, with face is part of sanitation, as in hand washing with soap. Okay, so came from the Wikipedia that part. Sanitation generally refers to provisions of facilities and service for the safe disposal of human and urine faces. In other words, okay, the sanitation also refers to the maintenance of hygienic conditions through the service such as garbage collection, waste disposal, and by the WHO. Okay, so hindi lang ang sanitation doesn't refer for applying application of chemical, sanitizing chemical, or, up, or, or removing invisible dirt. It also applies with ourselves. Okay, how to make ourselves sanitize. Okay, and to not be carry of bacteria or any viruses. Okay, so sanitizing means removing an invisible dirt such as microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, and it's done using by heat, radiation, or chemicals. Heat and chemicals are used are commonly used as a method for sanitizing a restaurant or radiation is rarely, rarely. Hindi natin masyadong ginagawa yung radiation. Okay, so you can take on the page 9 of our civilian. What is contamination? Okay, so contamination is defined by dictionary.com is the act of contaminating or making something impure, okay, or unsuitable by the contact with the something unclean or bad. Okay, that is the contamination. It's something or making uh, the clean into impure, making the clean unsuitable uh, to consume. Okay, through what? By the contact of something unclean or bad, uh, uh, bad habits or uh, bad actions, mga ganyan sa kusina natin. So, uh, it is something okay, that adds to a clean food or clean raw ingredients to make this food cannot be consumed. Okay, that's what you call contamination. So food contamination can have a serious consequences for both consumers and the food business alike. Why? Kasi it, it happens kasi na pag, for example, nakapag-serve ka ng sirang pagkain, okay, uh, madidelikado mo yung buhay ng iyong customer, 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 <laughs> at saka mapapangit or madudungisan ang pangalan mo as a business. Okay? Next, what are the four types of food contamination? Okay, food contaminations, uh, or number one is the chemical contamination. So chemical contamination is the kind of contamination that uh, you added or accidentally added a chemical substance or substances. Okay, and then uh, that chemical uh, uh, mixed to that food and that food ate by a person or consumer and then nagkaroon na siya ng seizure or whatever uh, uh, result of eating or drinking a chemical okay, in a food. Okay, so that's the first uh, chemical uh, contamination that we had. 
Okay, so the second one is the microbiological contamination or biological contamination. So microbiological contamination happens when a food has been contaminated by microorganisms including bacteria, virus, mold, fungi, and toxins. Okay, this can happen through the various means of example. Number one, undercook. Okay, food. Okay, so hindi pwede natin i-undercook ang food kasi it could have a champylobacter type of bacteria okay, na present doon plus the salmonella virus na pwede rin makuha natin. Okay, the second one is during the rearing slaughtering of animals, the salmonella that lives in the animal intestines can transfer onto the food products. Okay, that's the <coughs> second. Next is uh, storing and preparing high-risk raw food, close to ready-to-eat food that can lead to cross-contamination. What is this cross-contamination? Cross-contamination, it is a transfer of bacteria to one place to another. Okay? So, ang nangyari ngayon is nag-prepare ka ng pagkain okay, ng mga sariwa or mga hilaw katabi ng mga pagkain na ready-to-eat. Ngayon, nang nangyari, nausog mo konti yung manok na touch dun sa tinapay na katabi niya. So ngayon, yung bakterya nang galing dun sa manok, malilipat dun sa tinapay. So that's what you call cross-contamination. So example po yun ang microbiological contamination. Another, fish and shellfish may be eat toxic producing organisms that are dangerous to human if they eat them. Okay? Sample po natin yan ng uh, yung mga fish na yan. Okay, so simplest form. Okay, microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, fungi, or toxins that contaminate the food. That's microbiological or anything that has a life that can transfer the bacteria to one to that place uh, to that uh, clean food. Okay, microbiological contamination is the most common reason behind the outbreak of food poisoning. Okay. The best way to prevent this type of contamination is the following, the strict high standard food hygienic practices. Okay, it means that you need to, to, need to have impeccable, impeccable personal hygiene and taking time off from work when you are ill. Okay, second one is separating raw to ready to eat food. Okay, always wash the raw fruit or vegetables, controlling the pests and ensuring they are not on the premises. Pag may nakita ka ng maliit na bubuit dyan, alam mo na na merong nandyan na din yung nanay. Okay? Parang ganon. So, you need to, you need to, uh, to think those uh, factors para may iwasan natin yung tinatawag nating contaminations. Okay? So, the next one is physical contamination. What is this physical contamination? It happens when the food has been contaminated by a foreign object. What are those foreign objects? Those are not part of the ingredients of the food. Example, jewelry, hair, plastics, bones, stones, pest bodies, or, and cloth. Those are uh, physical contamination. Even sometimes the fingernails, no? Minsan naghihiwa ka, yung pala fingernails na pala yung nahihiwa mo, tapos naisama mo sa pagkain. So example, yan ang ano, physical contamination. Another, bumibili ka ng mga paminta or kaya laurel na naka-stapler. Okay, tapos pag hila mo dun sa ano sa mismong cardboard niya yung papel, okay, pati yung stapler na isama mo dun. Ang tawag dun is physical contamination. Okay? So, ano, broken glasses. Yan, na possible na nakasama. Plastics. Okay, na nahiwa kasama ng paghihiwa natin. Hindi ba usually pag nagpo-frozen meat tayo, minsan yung plastic nasa ilalim. Tapos kapag, kapag pinulot mo na siya, yung plastic nakadikit dun sa ano sa meat. Yung ang hirap tanggalin. Okay, so example po siya ng physical contamination. Last one, what is this contamination? Okay, this, the last one is the allergens. All the alert allergenic contamination. What are these allergenic contamination? These are the, uh, the allergens or, <coughs> excuse me, these are the nutrients or possible a substance that present in a specific kind of food. Okay, that could uh uh ano to make uh an active allergic allergic reaction to the person who ate the food 
Okay? For example, allergic ka sa seafood. Ay na accidentally nakakain ka ng extract ng hipon. So mamaya mamaya nangangati ka na. So ang tawag doon is allergenic contamination. Okay, hindi ka mahilig sa manok tapos ko ay yung nagkaano nangangati ka sa <coughs> nangangati sa <laughs> sorry sorry. Nangangati ka sa manok tapos still I have no choice you need to eat this. Ayun, kinain mo and then paggabi nangangati ka na. So ang tawag doon is allergenic contamination. Hindi natin may iwasan 'yan. Okay, sa mga pagkain kasi present na 'yan eh. Kahit anong luto natin sa mga pagkain, hindi na yan mawawala. All you have to do is to know your allergens in order for you not to uh, to go uh, to have an allergenic reactions. Okay, kaya minsan 'di ba pag ano, pag nasa restaurant kayo or kumakain kayo, minsan tinatanong diyan ni waiter, do you have any allergens? Kasi pag kasi pag syempre pag pag pagkain yan, putay yan, may mga iba't ibang mga mixture yan, ang seafood, iba't ibang seasoning, iba't ibang mga mga ano, mga proteins natin, no? Para lang maging mas lapit pagkain. So, pag alam mo may allergy ka ka sa, sa hipon, alam mo na sabihan mo yung waiter na please do not put uh, shrimp or shrimp broth. Ayan, para hindi na para hindi ka magkaroon ng allergic allergic reaction. Okay? So that is what you call allergenic reactions. Okay. This is the cross contamination. Okay. Types of cross contamination. Kanina, ang ang tanong ang 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 ano na ang ano natin discussion is four types of food. Okay? Food ha. Four types of food contamination. That's the term, food contamination. The second is the types of cross uh, cross contamination. Okay, what is this cross? Di ba sabi natin? Uh, cross contamination is a transfer. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, cross contamination is the transfer of bacteria to one place to another. That is cross contamination. So what are the different types of it? Number one is food to food. Okay, for example, yung chopping board. Ah uh, no 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 no. Ah uh, yung meat ng karne ng manok na dikit sa hipon. Example yan ng food to food. Okay? Ah uh, yung uh, hilaw na karne na dikit doon sa prutas na ready to eat. For example, apple or mango, mga ganyan. So ang tawag diyan is food to food contamination and that is worse. Okay, especially kapag yung pagkain o yung food is highly contaminated with bacteria or virus, the tendency the bacteria or virus present on that food will be transferred to the clean food or ready to eat food that could cause easily a uh, reactions, diarrhea, uh, vomiting, a uh, fatigue. Okay, it it happens. Okay, it happens. Okay, the second one Okay, equipment to food. Okay, how this equipment to food occurs? Okay, for example, gumamit ka ng kutsilyo, hinati mo sa isda or ginamit mo sa isda. Same kutsilyo, ginamit mo sa paghiwa ng mansanas, mangga. So tendency, yung juice or yung bacteria na present dun sa isda will now transfer to... Uh, to the to the fruit okay okay now who have eh? so that is equipment to food kaya importante na kapag gagamit tayo ng different equipment sa ating mga pagkain ang importante is lilinisin natin siya ng maayos or malinis para maiwasan natin yung contamination or cross contamination from equipment to food okay next one ah, kasama din sa equipment yung mga ano ha yung mga tools equipments or even machines Okay, so next one is people to food. Ayan, how these people to food affects the food, uh, affects the, the, tama, affects the food. Okay, so for example, saliva. Ayan, so habang nagluluto ka, dadal ka ng dadal, lahat ng laway mo nandun na sa pagkain. People to food contamination. Okay, another, open wounds. Yung mga sugat, bigla ka na sugatan, tapos yung dugo mo, nalagay mo dun sa ano, sa pagkain, ano tawag doon, seasoning po? Hindi. Okay, that's what you call people to food. Kaya usually kapag, di ba pag, uh, pag nasugatan ka, kailangan dapat may medic yan, dapat nakasilt agad yung woods mo. Kasi kapag nag-clot or nag-clutter, nag-clutter, not clot, nag-clutter yung dugo mo sa station, para may kinatay na doon na, ano, na, na hayo, or kaya 
yung kasi ang blood kasi natin ano ang blood ang <coughs> excuse me ang blood kasi natin it it uh, it has also a bacteria okay that can contaminate the food okay di ba pag minsan pag alasahan mo yung dugo mo ma, may may lasa so those those are uh, those are ano are bacteria present in our blood uh, our blood okay that possible contaminates okay the food for example the person that has wound Okay, has or carrying a uh, uh, carrying a virus. Okay, for example, HIV. Okay, so ang tendency, the blood, okay, na nalagay doon sa pagkain will now transfer to the person na merong ding sugat. Okay, kung, kung for example, yung taong kumain is meron siyang singaw or open wound, for example, kakabunot na ng ngipin, yung 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 virus pwedeng ma-transfer sa kanya. Okay? Nang diretso 'yon. So, is example 'yan ng people to vote. Kaya importante ko pag nasugatan po tayo, dapat ano na 'yan, uh, ano tawag nito, i-sealed and then sa kakaulit mag mag-work. Hindi yung habang dinudugo yung daliri mo o yung anong parte ng katawan mo dinudugo, tuloy-tuloy ka pa rin. Hindi, you need to post for a while and then you see you 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 ano to <laughs> you aid your wounds okay so nakuha po ba okay so but do not misinterpret ah this example lang po yun ah i'm not i'm not uh hindi ko wala akong binabayad na any kasi that is a fact naman possible naman kasi it happens that blood to blood contact you can transfer any viruses okay uh <clears throat> yeah, para for for clarification lang it's just an example lang po Okay, ng ating uh, people to food. Another, people to food. Okay? Uh, yung kamay mo, hinawakan mo yung karne. Yan, hinawakan mo yung karne, hinawakan mo. Okay, tapos mamaya-maya nakalimutan mo maghugas. Hey, kumain ka ng tinapay, kinain-kain mo. So yung bacteria na present sa kamay mo, na ano na, nakain mo na. Or, may dumi yung kamay mo, hindi ka naghugas, hinawakan mo yung panibagong pagkain na ready to eat food na. Then, serve. Okay? So, you can contaminate. Okay? Also, the food. Okay? So, next is, <clears throat> who is at risk? Okay? The answer is, everyone is at risk. Okay? But, higher nga lang ang risk sa mga pregnant woman under 5 years old over 65 years old, and those who are weak in immune system. Okay? So, next. I think last slide na ata itong susunod natin. Okay, so uh, sanitizing disinfecting procedure techniques. Okay, when sanitizing is done, okay, so now we will go tayo with the basic rules of kitchen safety. Okay, para safety naman natin. So para atis, alam natin yung mga gagawin natin sa loob ng kusina. Number one, store the knife in wooden or drawer or wooden block or drawer or any storage item na pwede natin ilagay yung kutsilyo na hindi siya delikado sa mga kukuha ng kutsilyo. Okay, example po yan. Basic rules. Okay, number second, never cook in loose clothes. Okay, wag daw mag-cook na loose daw yung sleeves. Okay, and keep along the hair, o hair daw tied. Okay, at saka meron niyang hairnet at meron niyang apron. Kung meron, ay apron tuloy. Hairnet at saka cup, chef cup na tinatawag natin. Okay, available po yan sa mga SM balls. Okay, you try to find those uh, hair cup. Okay? Another is keep pot holders nearby para hindi mo nahawakan accidentally yung mga may init na kaldero. Okay? So turn on the pot's handle. Uh, turn pot handles away from the front of the stove. Okay? Huwag mo daw, ay, ila ilayo mo daw yung handle sa uh, front ng stove. Diba? For example, ito yung kalan, no? Ito yung handle. Huwag mong itapat dito yung ano, yung handle. Okay, so next we have here, don't let the temperature sensitive foods sit out in the kitchen. 
what do, what what is that mean you are mean uh, you uh, it means that the romites uh stay in a certain area or an open area for a long period of time why kasi uh it is it is exposed in air okay once the food they are exposed in the air there are some bacteria that are can be uh can ano yun, can be landing <laughs> ano yan yung na malalagay or mamaapunta doon sa pagkain. Kaya di ba mapapansin nyo kapag bumibili kayo sa mga restaurants, no? After maluto yung pagkain inside the kitchen, meron po tayong tinatawag na dispatching counter. Ang dispatching counter, it is a link between the kitchen to the service or the waiters. Okay? Yung area na yun, yung dispatching counter na yun, ano lang yan, maliit lang yan na cabinet na kung saan merong thermal heat. Uh, kaya di ba pag bumibili kayo sa Jollibee or McDonald's, di ba? Pag tapos ang pagkain, nilalagay nila doon sa may cabinet na may ilaw. Yung ilaw na po yung hindi lang po siya ilaw. That's what you call thermal. Okay, thermal, ano po yan? As, uh, not thermal scanner. Thermal, uh, masa, mainit na temperature siya. Okay, na kung saan, para ma-maintain yung init. Kasi pag ma-maintain mo yung init kasi, naiiwasan mong matapuan o dumami ang bakterya doon sa pagkain. So it is a safe procedure. Not just maintaining the heat or the temperature of the food, but of course, you are avoiding the different bacteria that can uh, that can be top, okay, on the food na meron tayo. Okay? So next is, so we have here the wipe up spills immediately separate the raw meats from poultry. Ayan, usually pag namimili tayo, no, pag pumunta tayo sa mga karne, karne ng baboy, karne ng manok, usually pag silid tayo ng silid sa lalagyan, okay, karne ng manok, pak, lagay sa bag. Okay, karne ng baboy, pak, lagay sa bag. Tapos, tapos yung isda, katabi din. Example po yan ng, ano, ng food to food contamination. Kasi iba't ibang proteins, magkakaiba po sila ng pinanggalingan. So syempre, kung, kung ang baboy galing sa farm, same thing with the chicken, Okay, but chicken itself has also a unique bacteria that present to their skin. Tapos sinama mo pa yung galing sa dagat. Eh, ang, eh, ang, ang tubig is mas mabilis siyang uh, dapuan ng bakteriya kasi nga may pH levels siya na, 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 ano, na neutral. Kaya mabilis mong mapanis ang seafood compared sa mga meats or mga dry goods. Kasi ang seafood po kasi babad sa tubig. At ang tubig, pag bumaba ang temperature niya o naging neutral ang temperature niyan, wala na, dead na yan. Kasi mag start na po siyang ma-spoil. That's why kapag pupunta kayo ng palengke, napapansin nyo sa mga nagtitinda ng isda, may mga yelo or kaya nasa ibabaw ng yelo. Kasi para ma-maintain po yung cold temperature, maiwasan, ng, uh, maiwasan yung pagbilis or pagdami ng mga bakterya. Okay? Yun po yung purpose nun. Hindi po yan dahil ma-maintain lang po yung lamig or ma-maintain yung freshness nung nung seafood natin hindi that that is the the pur ang purpose nun is to stop or to slow down the growth of bacteria that present in the food okay so nakuha po ba yung ganung uh, ganung info okay next wash your hands before handling food and after handling meat or poultry. Okay, you need to wash it, wash. Okay, get fire extinguisher from your kitchen para kaya nagkaroon man ng burn or kaya biglang mag-explode mag or something, you are ready. Okay, so mapasin nyo sa kusina meron tayong fire extinguisher. Okay, so methods of sanitizing, we need to have a thermal. Pag sabi thermal, heat is present. Okay, chemicals. I, I, this one, this one is a sample of mechanical dishwashing machine. Ayan, nakikita nyo ninyo, no? Nandito yung mga plato, tapos papasok yan dito sa first bin which is the, the wash and then susunod dyan yung rinse, then pinakalas po yung thermal, yung heat, yung sanitizing. Okay, na kung saan merong mainit na temperature na hangin, na kung saan yun po yung mag, mag evaporate ng mga nalinisan na ma, mga, mga plato. So example po yan. Okay, so important in cleaning and sanitizing. Okay, number we have here, the very, very important, the three bucket method. The three bucket methods are the wash, rinse, and sanitize. Okay, syempre, yung una, bago ka mag-wash, ka mag yung mga scrape mo muna yung mga dumi dun sa plato. Dapat ang mag-iwan na lang dyan, konting sarsa. And then you wash. After you wash, you rinse. 
Then after you rinse, you put in the hot water with a temperature of 70, 70. Tama. 25 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is the check, the temperature check. Okay, so that will be, meron pa ba? Ah, okay. So syempre, dahil marami tayong tools and equipments, okay, dapat alam din natin kung paano siya itatago. Okay, itatago rin natin siya sa, sa pangalang Marites. Char. Okay. okay. <laughs> Joke lang po yun. Okay. Masyado po kayong seryoso, ba't di po kayong nagsasalita? Char. <laughs> Hindi naman po kasi ang nagtatanong eh. Okay, so why do we need to, uh, uh, to store our cleaning tools and materials Okay, in the right place or in the right uh, storage. Bakit po kailangan? Ay, wala po ba kung ano? Hello po. Ay, wait lang. Excuse. Asan yung ano? Hello po. Hello sir. Nag-share po ba ako ng screen? Yes po, sir. Uh, dito na sana using yes, storing and cleaning yes. materials chemicals. Sige na ba na ako? Wala na kasi sa ano, nawala sa frame ko. Yung ano, yung ayun, yung share screen. Just po, kala ko lang. Ang dami. Kanina pa. <laughs> ayan. Uh, question po, dahil may mga nagsalita na. Ayan. Question ko po sa inyo, why do we need to store the cleaning materials in the right place or storage uh, ano area? Why do we need po? Ang um, Daisy, bakit po kaya? So that we can also reuse it. If we properly stored it, we can okay. reuse it. So mas madali, ma'am, ang point is mas madali siyang hanapin. Tama po ba? Kasi nasa tamang lagayan. Tama po. Tama po ba? Yes, po, yes sir. sir. Tama po. Okay. So yeah, that's the one purpose. Why do we need to return the tools and equipments in the right place? So that when we use it again, we know already where is that place. So that is the one example of 5S or good practice of housekeeping. Okay, what is the 5, 5S? For history, po muna tayo ng 5S. 5S is a, is a Japanese, uh, Japanese workflow okay, or practices. That's how they maintain the quality okay, of their products. They are, they are always applying the 5S. Okay, so what is this 5S all about? Okay, the 5S is the, is the fundamental step implementing in an a certain enterprise or business okay, para, ma para ma implement yung total quality management. Okay, so uh, what is this 5S? So how this 5S effect affect? The business. Okay, we have here the sample. Okay, of a uh, a business. Okay, of uh, that applies the five the principles of five S. Okay, we have here the sample. Uh, the Toyota. Asan si Toyota? Asan yung sample ni Toyota? <laughs> Hello po. Ayan. Ah 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 ah. Ayan. So the, the, the use of the tool was started in 1972 by Henry Ford in the use as the Kando program, cleaning up, arranging neatness, discipline, and ongoing improvement. The, the, the technique was popularized by the Japanese 5S during the 1980s by Furioku Hirano, which is the owner of Toyota Company. Yun yung alam ko, yun yung pagkakalam ko. Di ba no, Sir Vince? <laughs> alam ko, seryoso po yung aking ano, branch yun. Ayan. So doon po nag-start yun hanggang sa in-apply na po ng mga empleyado yung 5S and then they maintain the quality of their products. Okay? Kaya pag sinabing Japan made yan, quality yan. Kasi ina-apply lagi nila yung good housekeeping, yung, yung process or yung system. Hindi na nawawala sa... <laughs> Excuse me. Hindi na po nawawala yan. Okay? Sa sistema nila, yung 5S na yan. Sa atin, ginagawa naman natin. Okay, especially when our parents is asking for something. For example, uh, oh, sige, we have here the broom or the soft broom. Inilalagay siya lagi sa likod ng pinto. Okay, so if that soft broom are placed in a, at the back of the door, any door, kung saan mang door yan. Okay, so 
Then, tinuruan niya yung kanyang mga anak na, o oh, sige, dito lang natin siya ilalagay. Okay? So, alam niyo na, pag tumingin sa pinto at wala siya doon, possible ginagamit. Okay? So, ganun po siya nasanay. So, kung, kung meron po kayong specific place, okay, na pwede paglagyan ng mga tools, dapat maintain niyo na yon. Okay? Maintain niyo na siya. Kasi, pag na-maintain niyo na siya, so, magiging, ano na siya, <coughs> magiging, uh, parte na siya ng sistema every day. Okay? Ganun po yan. Okay? So, uh, uh, the 5S is the acronym for five Japanese word. Means Seiri, Seiton, Seiso, Seikatsu, and Shitsuke. So, that is the Japanese term for 5S. Okay? The Seiri, Seiton, Seiso, Seikatsu, and Shitsuke. So, that is the Japanese term natin ng 5S. What is this uh, Seiri? Seiri means in English, sort. Okay. So pag sinabi natin Sorting. sort, yes po. <laughs> Ayan. It means that we are arranging things okay, that are still needed, okay, to uh, mostly needed, and to not needed. We separate those things. Diba pag, pag naglilinis kayo ng bahay no, o naglilinis kayo ng certain area, di ba Ma'am Daisy? Uh, di ba pag, pag naglilinis kayo, tinignan nyo lahat yung gamit, no? so susuriin ninyo, alin dito yung papakinabangan, hindi papakinabangan, at yung pwede pa pero hindi pa ngayon. Di ba mga ganun? Pero totally pag hindi na papakinabangan, tinatapon. Okay? So that is example or application ng sword. Sa ating mga Pilipino, ginagawa na natin yan. Hindi nga lang natin alam ano yung term. Okay, ng, ano, ng practice natin ng housekeeping na yan o ng system na yan. So, kapag ginawa mo na yun, in-apply mo na yun, nag-sort ka ng things. Okay, then in-itemize mo, alin dito yung mga bagay-bagay. Okay, then you apply. Okay, you already apply the first Japanese word, uh, Siri, means sort. Okay, and then when you're done, Okay, in sorting things, you, you identify, okay, you identify what are uh, needed, commonly needed, and not needed, and then you throw the not needed, and then lahat ng mga naiwan, ng na mga gamit, ng mga kailangan mo, inayos mo siya ngayon based sa pagkakagamit or pa based sa laki, liit, uh, kailangan ko ba agad, hindi ko kailangan, mga ganun, parang sa damit, kapag nag tayo ng damit, no? <laughs> nag-aayos yung nanay ko ng damit. <laughs> Ayan. So, di, di ba, mapapansin nyo doon, yung mga commonly na damit na ginagamit nyo, yun yung nasa ibabaw ng mga damitan. Pero yung mga hindi nyo masyadong sinusot na damit, nasa pinakailalim. Okay? Kasi, yun yung nagiging practice. Okay? Kasi yun yung nagiging set in order. Which is what you call in Japanese is Satan. Okay, you set in order para maging maganda, maayos, malinis at conducive yung certain area or place or uh, location ng pinag-ayusan nyo. And then you maintain, you continually clean, you continue clean. Uh, uh, you you still uh, ano continue to organize. Okay, that's the time you are making it shine. Not shine is application of not application of wax or polishing wax. The, the term shine here is, the other term is maintaining. Okay? You are maintaining it. Okay? After you setting order that things, you maintain it. Okay? Nililinis mo palagi ulit, araw-araw, ganyan. Kasi maganda na eh. So all you have to do is to maintain. Okay? Yun naman po yung ating third Japanese word na say so. Maintaining. Okay? So, or polishing. Ayan. Polishing. Okay? So, the, the next one after you polishing, okay? So, malinis na siya. You standardize. Ibig sabihin, kahit na uh, pag pull out mo, ibabalik mo ulit. Kasi dun talaga siya nakalagay. Kasi dun siya bagay. Okay? That's what you call the standardize. Okay? At the same time, hindi lang ikaw yung alam o yung tamang lagayan nun. Pati yung mga taong nasa paligid mo, alam din niya, alam din nila kung saan ang lagayan na yun. Okay? Kasi you set a standard. Eh. You set a specific uh, location or place for it. 
Okay, nasasabihin mo sa lahat ng tao, oh, lahat ng mga hiram sa akin ng gitong gamit, dito nyo ibabalik yan ha. Kasi pag, dito, pag hindi nyo ta dito ibabalik, hindi ko na kayo papahiramin. So ang tendency, yung mga tao na sa paligid mo, hihiram, ibabalik, hihiram, ibabalik, hihiram, ibabalik. Kasi that is your standard of arrangement. Okay, that is the fourth Japanese word means seiketsu. Why this Japanese uh, 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 tools and equipments or products have their quality because they set a standard. Okay, they know that every tools or equipments they create, they have the standard. Okay, uh, manufacturing or kaya creating those things. Okay, to the point that the since you set the standard, you already set the quality. of that product. Kasi nag-set ka ng standard eh. Siyempre, pag nag-set ka ng standard, may quality yan. Okay? Nakukuha ba? Kung parang pagbibili ka ng, ng ano, mga equipment, okay, bumili ka ng maganda. Japan made. Ayan, siyempre, maganda. Japan made. Okay, alam mo may quality kasi they know the standard. That's, that is the edge of Japanese people. I'm not saying the Chinese one. But, Di siya, alam naman natin ang product ng, ng Chinese, di ba? Some, most, okay, not all, most of, their, uh, most of their equipment or tools na ginagawa are disposable. So, you can see already the quality is not, uh, not totally given or provided. Di ba? Okay, kasi hindi nila na-adopt or hindi nila in or probably hindi in ng company yung ganong klase na na ano na na system yung standardization na tinatawag natin okay kasi pag nag-extend ka kasi ng standard alam mo na na kasi ito yung kailangan natin para mabigay natin yung quality okay so that is the standardized okay and then of course after you maintain the standard you know already the quality the last is um sustain Okay, yung tipong kahit mamatay ka na, dyan na yan. Kasi bakit? You sustain. Okay, yung sustainability, yung stable. Okay, na, na kahit ibang tao yung mag-manage na dyan yan kasi you already establish. Okay, the, uh, the right and proper and the quality. Okay, na binigay mo. And that is the last 5S means in Shitsuke. So that is the five Japanese system. that they always apply in every product's service okay, they offer to the people. Okay, kaya ngayon, ang nangyari, la, most of the quality okay, of the tools and equipments nang gagaling kay Japan. Japan, Japan quality yan eh. Kasi 5 years yan. Okay? Yan yung kailangan i-level up nating mga Pilipino para ma-maintain natin yung quality natin. We maintain this, this sacred system. Okay, para mabigay natin yung magandang quality na, na product o serbisyo sa mga tao na sa paligid natin or even sa business na itatayo natin. Okay? I think this one is the last one na. Waste management. Yan. Waste management and disposal procedure. Okay, para at least pagdating nyo dito sa actual, okay na tayo. Hindi na natin problema. Okay, cleanest, cleanest na class. Pagdating ko ay malinis na lahat. Kasi alam na natin yung ginagawa. Okay, alam na natin yung output. Alam na natin yung mga, yung mga, yung mga dispose natin. No? Okay, so let's, 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 let's define waste management and dispose. So, para tayo sa seminar na dito. No? Kasi ang dami na natin. Ano, ang dami, actually, madami eh. It's too much informative yung system ng CBLM. Kaya mapakita nyo, ah, nandito na tayo, ay, nandito na tayo. All of them are, ano, uh, uh, pwede nating i-apply sa sarili natin or even sa business natin. Okay, so waste management or waste disposal is all activity or actions required to manage waste from its inception to its final disposal. So that is, uh, ano, waste management. Okay, you are making or you are managing okay, the waste okay, from inception or from the start of being its waste until to the final disposal. So, yan tayo tukoy niyang 
uh, waste management. So benefits of waste management, number one is better environment. Kasi you analyze different kinds of waste. When you analyze different kinds of waste, okay, you will know there, uh, you will know the cap capability of this kind of waste, kung biodegradable, non-biodegradable, uh, uh, ilang araw siyang pwede magstay stay ni, uh, ano yun, um, mabuhay or madissolve, okay? Okay, it, it helps. It helps. Okay, it helps the, the environment. Okay? The next one is it reduces the pollution. Okay? It reduces the pollution. Kung alam mo na na bawal magsino, actually ngayon, di ba, may bata sa tayo na bawal magburn ng dahon or anything or plastic, especially plastic. Okay? Well, hindi pwede mag, uh, mag uh, burn. Kasi it creates pollution eh. So through the waste management, Okay, nabawasan mo na ngayon yung pollution. Okay? Second one, conserves energy. Okay, recycling is one of the biggest aspect of waste management and over time, it helps conserve energy. One of the biggest instances, the advantage of the taste practice of recycling paper. Okay, all of us is, are probably aware, aware of thousand trees that are cut when producing paper. When you use the paper recycle, okay. So example natin ng conserves energy, okay, for the trees. Alam natin na ang puno ay, uh, ang mga papel ay galing sa mga puno. Pero dahil sa ginagawa nating recycle, okay, recycling industry, yung mga used paper, yung mga uh, ginamit natin is pwede ulit gamitin pangalawa kasi pinaprocess. Okay, para makagawa ng mga papel. So tendency, instead na laging putol ng puno, so hindi iiwasan mo na ngayon yung pagputol ng puno kasi ang kailangan mo lang gawin or gamitin sa pag-create ulit ng papel ay yung mga dating papel na ginawa nila o ginawa ninyo. Okay, so that is concern, uh, example of Create employment. Of course, siyempre, dahil wage management yan, you need to hire people to analyze how to uh, to, to manage a different kind of ways. Okay? It helps to make difference. Siyempre, pag ano, uh, iba ang ano, iba ang may alam, iba ang may pinag-aralan. Diba? Pag nagtatapon ka ng basura, sa kalang tapon, ang sasabihin sa'yo, ano ba naman yung taong yan? Walang, parang walang pinag-aralan. Kasi kung saan nagtatapon, nagtatapon, nagtatapon ng mga basura. Ay kung yung basura, tinapon mo sa tamang basurahan, ay okay ito ha. Nakaka-good shot, di ba? Nakaka-good vibes. Kasi may mga tao, mga gandang ugali pagdating sa mga pagkatapon ng mga basura. Okay, next natin is waste management cycle and steps. Okay, we have here recycling reuse, waste removal, <coughs> excuse me, waste treatment, waste transportation, storage and collection, and landfill disposal. So those are the different waste management that we need to apply. Pero siyempre, dahil, dahil ano naman tayo, dahil uh, hindi naman tayo company for the waste management, okay, at least alam natin kung paano umiikot yung ating waste management system. Okay? So that we think that will be all for our discussion ng ating uh, core one. Then tomorrow we will discuss the core two and the core three. Ayan, we try to discuss the core two and the core three tomorrow kasi alam ko medyo mahaba-haba yung discussion. Pero we will try it. Uh, tomorrow is Monday. Okay? Automatic wala tayong pass Sunday. Okay? Tomorrow is Monday. So Monday ko po ulit. Ay, uh, tanong po ko sa Jen M. May pasok na po kayo sa Monday? Meron na po si Sir na po naman. Uh, sir, can I ask po any, any, ano, kung ano po yung convenient time for everybody to have a, synchro, uh, to have a synchronous uh, lecture po natin. Kung hindi, uh, at least para at least makapag-adjust po kami ng oras kung ano oras po kayo po pwede. Pwede pong ano, malaman sa inyo mga teacher po kung anong oras po kayo available. Kasi kami, kasi for example, like uh, mga working, syempre hanggang 5 yan. O kaya hanggang 4. Ayan. So, ask po ako sa inyo ng time para at least mapaproof po sa head ko kung, kung okay po sila sa ganong time. Pag-usapan niyo po ng mga, mga teacher po ng Zen M and then sabihin niyo po sa akin after kung makapag-decide po kayo kanong oras na mas maluwag po for everyone. Okay? So, uh, any questions po for our topic ng clean maintain kitchen premises? Diba? Clean maintain kitchen premises. Napunta tayo sa waste management. No? Buong gobyerno na, na, na pag mapapag-usapan natin sa waste management. Pero, you know, uh, that, that is a uh, close of our topic kasi. Yun yung topic natin for the core one. And all of the topic of the core one applies in our core competency of UGRI. 
Okay, so any questions pa po? Any questions? 